All right, Peter Berg, uh, director of Battleship. When you were approached uh, with the idea, uh, I suppose, by the producers uh, to do a movie based on a board game, did you at any point think, what a silly idea? Well, it was actually my idea. So if it's a silly idea, I'm the one that had it. Uh, and, and the answer is no. Um, I, my father was a naval historian. I grew up in Navy museums all over the world, um, writing papers on different naval battles, particularly the Japanese-American conflict in the Pacific in World War II. Um, my father had a sailboat, and every summer I used to spend out on the sea. I've worked on uh, fishing boats. I own a boat myself. I love the water, and I've been wanting to do a Navy movie for a long time. And the idea of taking this brand, this giant brand name, Battleship, which people generally know, and it's a, na a game about naval combat. You and I are playing it. I'm trying to find you and kill you. You're trying to find me and kill me. That was a good starting off point. Um, and it gave me a lot of ideas, and I thought, it would be an opportunity to do something new and very creative. Mm -hmm. But do you think that uh, one obstacle for the possible success of the movie is the preconceived notions of people that this is uh, what it's a board game? Yeah, I don't. Really? I don't think so. You know, I mean, I think if 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 the movie is good and people see footage of it and they feel like there's something there, there'll be no problem. I mean, there was a lot of negativity. Um, around Pirates of the Caribbean. There was no Jack Sparrow in that. Pirates of the Caribbean was a ride at Disneyland, had no story. Um, Transformers were a little plastic toy. Yeah. Um, you know, if, I think one of, the, one of the great things about the film business is there are no rules, other than the audience gets the vote. Mm -hmm. If the movie works and the audience loves it, the movie is a hit. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And um, There are no rules about what gets you there, so I'm I'm excited. I'm not I'm not worried. Well, I'm excited too because uh, I'm also a fan of big battleships. I always wanted to 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 see them in action. I've watched all the old uh, war epics uh, yeah. where they uh, are part of Tora Tora and, yeah, and sure. stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, nowadays, most of these big battleships are decommissioned or yeah. mu museums. Yes. Didn't that bother you to include them in um, the movie? Well, what, what, I thought, what I thought about that um, was that, you know, I, I know the, enough about the modern Navy to know that, yeah, that, there, are, there are no battleships. There are a couple of battleships, the Missouri being one, which is a museum now technically in <clears throat> Pearl Harbor. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Missouri, though, could be reactivated. There's old veterans run it. It would take a little bit of time, but the Missouri could be reactivated if the Navy decided they needed her. But what the Navy does have, which no one's ever filmed, are these Aegis-class destroyers. And they're about 250 meters long, 500 people on board. They carry 60 missiles, multiple weapon systems. They're capable of extraordinary operation. And they've never been filmed. And I thought it would be really cool to go on board. And I have great uh, cooperation with the Navy, both the United States Navy and the uh, Japanese Navy. And I thought it could be really interesting to be able to show these ships and take an audience into a world that they have literally never been in before. They haven't been because they are, uh, as it seems, aliens. Uh, <clears throat> looking at the first pictures, at first I thought uh, maybe they're some subterranean sub uh, aquatic uh, yeah. race or whatever but now i think it's safe to say they are a of alien origin yes um and they are um what i get uh, not not just bad guys you made it a little bit more complicated yes i mean they came uh, uh, as the result of a beacon signal that we sent out and uh, we really do send out signals from earth to planets that we've identified as potentially being the right climate to sustain life. <clears throat> and Stephen Hawking, the great scientist and um, theorist, came out with a documentary on aliens two years ago, and he said, he said that we're, we're targeting planets that we think have life on them. This is a stupid idea. This is a horrible idea. If, if they're out there and they come, who thinks they're going to be nice? Um, And that, it was at the core of, of our idea that we do send out a signal, they do come, but they don't come to kill us, they come to investigate us. They're not necessarily warriors, 
<clears throat> they're capable of defending themselves, but they're actually more scientific. And the fight starts because some of our Navy encounters them and they're suspicious and they're scared and there are a lot of misunderstandings and they start fighting. But <clears throat> the aliens in Battleship are not inherently violent. So they are also kind of a mirror of uh, humans because uh, if we go somewhere, it might be humanitarian, but it might be also in a military uh, Correct. operation. Correct. I mean, I think it's safe to say if we went to a planet where we really thought there was going to be life, we would be ready for any contingency, including violence. Oh. What's uh, also new about the movie is the casting of Rihanna. She's uh, yeah. mostly known nowadays uh, as a singer. Uh, how did that come? Did she actively pursue the role and say, no, I want I, this? I pursued her. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, finding new faces and finding people, someone that nobody would ever think of as an actor and giving them a role. And then uh, people sort of, wow, they like discover something for the first time. And I've worked with musicians before. Tim McGraw is a very famous American country singer who acted in a movie I did called Friday Night Lights and that went so well that I asked him to come back and he played a great role in a movie I did called The Kingdom. And Rihanna is someone who I'd, had, I'd watched for a while. I'd, I'd noticed her videos and thought she was very charismatic and you know obviously very sexy but I sensed that there was a real performer you know inside of her. Mm. And after um, she had a very public incident with a, her ex-boyfriend, she went on an a American news show, Diane Sawyer, and gave an incredibly candid interview about what happened and how she got to a place where you know, this violence occurred and how she felt about it and you know, what responsibility was hers and what responsibility wasn't hers. And I was like, holy shit, this girl's like really very intelligent, very smart. I'm very self-possessed. This person doesn't look anything like the girl in the videos. I, f I, had, a, I had a hunch that she had a, could be a great performer, a great actor if she wanted to be. And so when this role came up, you know, I literally put out a phone call to her managers and said, does Rihanna have any interest in acting? And if so, would she come in for a meeting? The next day she came in by herself, you know, in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and sneakers looking like, you know, a completely normal, scrappy girl. And I said, do you really want to do this? And she said, you have no idea. I want to do it so badly. I will work my butt off. I will do whatever it takes to give a great performance. <clears throat> and it was really one of the best casting decisions I've ever made. So big thumbs up on Rihanna.